ครับสวัสดีครับทุกทุกท่านก็ก่อนวันนี้เราจะมีการบรรยายในเรื่องของ EMC นะครับซึ่งทางดรไฮได้เตรียมเอกสารไว้ค่อนข้างเยอะมากนะครับก็จะขออนุญาตทำหน้าที่อย่างนี้ครับว่าพอดรไฮได้บรรยายไปบางจังหวะนะครับที่มีประเด็นสำคัญผมก็จะขออนุญาตถอดความหรือสรุปประเด็นสำคัญแต่ถ้าเป็นกรณีที่ไหลลื่นไปเรื่อยๆก็อาจจะไม่ได้ทุกคำพูดนะครับแต่ว่าในประเด็นใดที่ท่านมีคำถามหรือ,อมีประเด็นนะครับท่านก็สามารถจะทำเป็นส่งเป็นโน้ตขึ้นมาก็ได้นะครับแต่ผมก็จะรวบรวมประเด็นแล้วก็ทำการสรุปในในแต่ละช่วงแล้วตอนท้ายตอนหลังตอนท้ายชั่วโมงนะครับจะมีการดิสคัชชั่นกันก็หวังว่าเวทีนี้จะเป็นเวทีที่ให้ทุกท่านได้ใช้ประโยชน์จากการเรียนรู้นะครับจากดรไฮเชนเกอร์นะครับดรไฮเชนเกอร์ได้บรรยายมาครั้งนี้เป็นครั้งที่สามนะครับสองสองหน้านี้สองหน้าครั้งนี้เป็นพาร์ทหนึ่งกับพาร์ทสองนะครับซึ่งพูดเรื่องของหลักการของ EMC ทั่วไปจนกระทั่งเป็น EMC ที่เป็น Product Level วันนี้เราจะคุยกันนะครับในเรื่องของพาร์ทสองแล้วก็พาร์ทสามนะครับซึ่งะจะเป็น Product Level ด้วยนะครับ uh, Hi now everything is okay and then let you uh, you start the presentation thank you Thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, then I say good morning from Germany or good afternoon to Thailand. <laughs> Here it is 8:30 in the morning, and uh, yeah, it's a pleasure for me to talk to you again. I don't know who is the first time participant and who already. Joined uh, the presentations before. Um, this is why I would like, first of all, um, go to uh, an overview, which uh, Dr. Rajat has uh, just mentioned. I would like to tell you again how it is, the whole uh, webinar or seminar, how this is uh, structured. Uh, in the part one, we talked about why do we need uh, EMC and uh, what is the risk and what is the whole problem about EMC. Oh. And uh, we learned also that EMC is not only not only something which is in the standards and has to be fulfilled. It is also, let's say, a functionality. And uh, in the part two, which we will see today. We will see uh, how it starts from the, let's say, physical point of view, electrotechnic, because EMC, EMC electromagnetic compatibility, that's not a miracle. This is a basic electrotechnic and physics. This is nothing new. This is everything uh, about currents, about voltages, and not a miracle. And then we have another three parts, actually, the part three, four, and five. Uh, which we will present very soon. I think there shouldn't be a long distance between uh, in between these presentations. This is why we will uh, continue with the part three, four, and five very soon. And there we talk about then, um, let's say, not only EMC. It's uh, very much about uh, R&D. Let's say product development, uh, electronic development, mechanical housing development, and then eventually also about measurements here in part four about uh, the standards, which should be followed uh, according to let's say CE Mark or FCC or CCC for China or whatever where you export, and then uh, how to measure the whole thing in the lab, not in a big EMC lab, uh, more on the in the lab of uh, let's say uh, your company, yeah. So and then in the last part uh, we talk about we will show troubleshooting. Uh, it would be very helpful. Maybe then we have the possibility to do also some experiments with measurement instruments. There I can show you in the lab how this thing works. Maybe also we can make this 
a part four, a part five in our new building already, then you can visit us. We will see how to organize this. Okay, let's go uh, to this overview of the part one, where I have talked about why do we need EMC. EMC, you know, uh, is uh, one part is radiated emission, conducted emission, everything. What is uh, what is emitted from a product, and uh, another part of the EMC is the immunity, meaning if some disturbance come from outside, like lightning, surge, or bursts, transients, electrostatic discharge, the product must still continue a safe way. And uh, I have explained, okay, if we just have some uh, annoying noise, like everybody knows you put your telephone somewhere in your car and then uh, you have music running, radio running, and then it makes, da -da 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 it's disturbing. Yeah, okay, you you hear it in the speaker, but it doesn't matter very much. But if you go to your... 80 can, can you show yes? chat a slide? Yeah, I did already. You can't see it? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, can you share again, please? Share again? Okay. Uh, I did already. Sorry. Uh, I thought you see it. Yeah. yeah uh... Now better? Yes. Yes. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, okay, but what I mentioned before, this was this was actually this slide here, which shows the which shows the uh, the parts how they how they are, let's say, okay. combined all together, which parts. This I don't need to show again. I think there's uh -huh. not very much to show. But uh, this part here, then the next one is the important one. And I mentioned if you have, you know, this risk assessment, this EMC behavior, we have on the one part, we have emission. And in the one other part, we have immunity. And I mentioned if some noise, like here, is in the radio, it doesn't matter very much. But if you go to your ATM and you want to have 5,000 baht and you get only 1,000, it's not so good no? because maybe of some electrostatic discharge or some malfunction of, uh, of a mobile oh, telephone. Uh, it's been high. Yes? The speed is uh, off now. O o only the video. I can see only your face, not the document. Okay. But I... Can, can you try again? Okay, okay. Yes. Yes. Okay, good. It should not, it, it should not change. Huh? I don't know why it is. Yeah, you see, maybe some okay. EMC, Everything's okay EMC now. effect. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, and yeah, if you get only small money from ATM and you ordered more, this is uh, quite annoying already. And the big problem, if, for example, have some fire or some uh, plane crashes or a car doesn't work anymore because of some interference and people die, then it's not very funny anymore. And this is this are EMC effects. And uh, I don't know if uh, you know about me, I am also uh, working for the, let's say, court for, uh, for the government. If something serious happens in EMC, I have to investigate and uh, effects in car, defects in car because of EMC. That's not a story, this happens. Not many times, but it happens. So this is uh, there can be a deep, deep impact in, regarding EMC, and this is not funny anymore. But if let's say the radiated emission, if you are two or three dB above the limit, it's not a big issue. But uh, functionality is something where really people have to take care, and this is dangerous for product and user. And this is why we said, okay, there must is some risk assessment. Risk assessment is also necessary according to the EMC uh, directive. Uh, uh, 2006 in Europe, the directive has been changed and also uh, in many other countries. So uh, everybody who exports a product uh, from Thailand to Europe, for example, must have a documentation with a risk assessment. This means what is the product? What should the product do? And if it doesn't work, what happens? It must behave safe. And this is uh, what we have in our law and in the standards nowadays. Okay, and uh, risk assessment, you see here some effects, lightning or searches. Uh, this is also what must 
be safe uh, according to the, let's say, uh, EMC standards, but also according to the safety standards. Nowadays, safety and EMC immunity is quite close. There is not, there's a huge overlapping. There's not something which is separated. So um, I mean, if, for example, you have a lightning and that lightning goes into some box, distribution box light here, there must be a safe behavior. This is why, for example, Cromwell has uh, products where you can where you can limitize tra transients over voltage protection or where you can make a grounding or something. This is because the buildings, the rooms, the equipment has to behave safely. This is why the products are here. And if you make nothing, yeah, then it's good luck or bad luck. If something happens, if a house burns or people are people die because of some over voltages. Yeah. And okay, let's go to the next slide. Uh, I explained uh, the different, let's say, phenomena in EMC, like uh, the electric field, the magnetic field, the RF field. So this is electromagnetic wave. This is electric and magnetic wave. Then we have currents, we have voltages, and they impact something like this distribution box here. Yeah. Uh, via cables, via the housing, there are different ways how the electric phenomena can go into the product. This, is, this I explained here. You have a noise source, lightning, mobile telephone, searches, bursts, or some, some other things, some other effects. Electrostatic discharge is another one. And we have a noise coupling channel. So from the noise, lightning, ESD, uh, there is a coupling channel, lightning, it is the air, and then the cable, uh, ESD, it's the person, for example, who discharges at the housing, and this goes into the noising. Noise, what is the noising? Noising is, for example, here, the inverters or some computer device inside. So from outside, via cable, for example, there will be a burst or surge going inside the housing, disturbing this one. Then the, no the cable is the noise channel the channel where the disturbance goes to your receiver. And this can only be in terms of voltage, current, and electromagnetic energy. There is no other possibility. This is not a miracle. It's called EMC, but it's voltages, currents, and electromagnetic energy, yeah? nothing else. So this can be explained very clearly. And there I explained this phenomena. This is everything what I explained last time in the part one. And again, we have the noise source, lightning, mobile telephone, bursts, searches, and we have the sink. This is, the, for example, your personal computer. The noise source, the person charged electrostatically, then you touch it with the finger, then the finger to the housing is the noise coupling channel, and the noising is your computer when the computer starts rebooting because it cannot handle the electrostatic discharge. And this is in terms of electrostatic discharge. It's a voltage between 5 kV, 20 kV, and the current up to 30, 40, 50 amps. Yeah? And this goes into the product. Electromagnetic energy, if you know noise source is your mobile telephone, for example, it radiates. Then the noise channel is the air, the electromagnetic ambient. Uh, and the noise sink, your radio or computer. So it is everything can be explained. All the phenomena in EMC can be explained. And uh, this is why we should look more into the detail. And this is also what I did here. I explained the noise source, the noise sink. We have an electric field, magnetic field. For example, here we have a disturbing line, power line, has some noise. And uh, in terms of uh, high current in a short time, may, uh, meaning a differential current here, di to dt, you will have a magnetic coupling, inductive coupling. If it is a high du to dt, differential voltage in a short time. Voltage, uh, let's say swing in a short time, you have a capacitive coupling. Yeah? And uh, if it is directly coupled with a wire, then you have the galvanic coupling. 
all this are phenomena. The most difficult to understand is the electric is the field coupling. There we have to differentiate between the electric and the magnetic field and the electromagnetic field. This we will see today uh, more closely. This depends on the distance and on the noise source impedance. An electric uh, an electric antenna, for example, uh, on 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 the uh, on a radio, you have to stick. Yeah, uh, this is an, an electric field antenna, monopole. The magnetic field is, for example, uh, a wire loop. Okay, this is still uh, what I explained. Okay. Can I uh, summarize a short one? Yes, please. Okay. 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 ที่ 1 นะครับแล้วก็ครั้งที่ 2 ที่ผ่านมาเพื่อให้เป็นเรื่องต่อเนื่องก็เลยมีการได้กล่าวถึงว่าในการที่เราจะส่ง risk assessment ก็คือการประเมินความเสี่ยงในเรื่องนั้นก็คือ EMC ด้วยนะครับก็มีเลเวลตัวได้รับผลกระทบแล้วก็คัปปิ้งคัปปิ้งเนี่ยจะเห็นว่าการคัปปิ้งเนี่ยของขึ้นไปไฟฟ้านะครับก็จะมีตัวหลักๆนะ
if you understand the principle, then it doesn't matter if the problem is in a device or in an IC. It can be understood and it can be solved. Okay. And then I said, okay, uh, in our seminar, we will talk about uh, the system plant, what happens there, like protection against lightning, searches, radiated fields, about if we talk about a device like a computer or on radio, we uh, need protection, the power supply against searches, the housing elect uh, against electrostatic discharge, uh, the power supply again against fast transients or the Ethernet cable or the USB cable, if it is longer than three meter, it must be uh, tested against first transients, radiated fields, again, the housing and so on. And you see uh, there are similarities uh, everywhere in each, like I say, integration stages. Yeah, And for sure everywhere you, you must uh, have, I say, uh, immune uh, red, uh, limitation or degradation or attenuation of, of, of the radiated uh, emission, of conducted emission, and uh, you must limitize the equalization current, currents, which are the currents between maybe one building and another building. Yeah? So this is uh, everywhere a similar approach. Yeah, and then uh, I have shown some examples yeah, uh, at system level. What happens? This is the equipotential grounding we need to connect the grounds of different, uh, let's say, products or different uh, levels together. We need uh, professional shielding of uh, data cables, signal cables, and we need a lightning protection. Yeah? The boundary at the system level is the building, yeah? uh, meaning we talk about buildings, not about small ICs. And then we said, if you go to the product device level, product, product like a computer, product like mobile telephone, we need to deal with the shielding. Yeah? Here we cannot um, make, in, at the system level, we cannot make very much with, with shielding. You cannot shield a whole, a whole building. There are another phenomena to deal with, but uh, at... Huh? Oh, 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 it's now, I know what I'm, okay, coming again. Uh, if we talk about the product, uh, we have to then to talk about the shielding and the PCB. And the PCB must have a proper ground system. The PCB must have, uh, must have a, the filter design. And the PCB, the ICs here must have some, uh, some uh, layout design. And the peripheral cables, sometimes they need to be shielded. Sometimes we have to have a, a, a differential, or meaning a, a, a common mode transmission signal like USB. This is a symmetric signal, like, uh, for example, the power is an unsymmetric signal. Some are shielded, some not. We will talk about this later. And if we talk about assembly level, this is the PCB itself. Then you see we have here a special layout design we have to take care. We have a filter design we have to take care. Here, for example, this is a gigabit Ethernet uh, interface with transient protection, with galvanic isolation between uh, the hub here and uh, and interface. In such things, we must think about the boundary is the PCB. And we talk about here the printed circuit board level. We will talk next time about this uh, topic, how to do the electronic design the proper way. Yeah, and then if you go to into the IC, you know, if you look, if you have to develop an electronic uh, PCB, uh, some circuit, for example, DC-DC converter, it matters very much what kind of uh, silicons, what kind of of transistors, what kind of uh, um, controller you use, or what kind of diodes you use, they have many different parameters. There are diodes, they have a very, uh, let's say, a short reverse recovery time, and there are diodes which disturb very much. And uh, already, if you go to the selection of the PCB, what kind of uh, devices I need to use, what kind of MOSFET, what kind of of a controller or gate driver like here. The, you see, if you go, this is this is just a screenshot from, you know, Mauser, the same like uh, where you can order uh, components. This decision here, which kind of component you use, uh, for example, for a, for a DC-DC converter here, 
Yeah? This is decisive how your layout will look like. You cannot just choose any. You must look exactly what kind of product you want to design. And then you can have a result like here, 30 dB above the limit, and have no chance to pass EMC because you have chosen already the wrong components. They don't fit together in the design. So there it starts. Yeah? Not just uh, one, one, uh, one N4101 use, uh, 4, 000, no, 4, 4001 use for everything. No, that doesn't work. Yeah? Or if I look for SMD ferrites, use only 600 ohm at 100 megahertz. No, no, uh, you must look exactly what kind of products you need of components yeah, at the component level. This we will talk about also in next time in our next seminar. Okay, system level, we said uh, we have some, some examples here. Uh, for example, this is for lightning protection. Uh, this is an, yeah, an air exhaust. And if it is not grounded, if it is isolated here, yeah, you see, this is isolation between the housing and then, and, and then you have a lightning here inside. The whole energy of the lightning will go inside the building. And once it is inside the building, you lost, it will destroy, it will damage everything. Yeah, everything. Even, so it must be like here, grounded, for example, outside the proper way. And then it, the building is safe. Yeah. Also, if we talk about the power line protection, there are surge protection devices. They must be at the building uh, interface, not somewhere in the in. You cannot expect um, uh, an AC power adapter or when, when you go into the, the shop somewhere and you buy the, the power uh, socket where you can put many, uh, many products inside. And this says there is a surge power protection. Uh, forget it. It doesn't work. This is this is uh, a dream. Yeah, uh, um, you must have the search pro uh, search protection device directly mm -hmm. at the input of the building, and not inside inside the office. That never works. Yeah. Just me, hi. And there, are yes. Yes. Can can I uh, have a look uh, one slide back? I would like to make some uh, comment to the Thai audience. Uh, yeah. กรณีนี้จะเห็นว่าสิ่งที่ตรงท่องระบายอากาศนะครับท่องลมนะครับที่กรณีที่บอกว่ามันไม่มันไม่ถูกต้องเนี่ยเพราะว่าโครงสร้างที่สูงสุดของอาคารเนี่ยใช้โครงสร้างของปล่องตัวนี้เป็นตัวทําให้เกิดถ้าเกิดฟ้าผ่าขึ้นมาแล้วเนี่ยก็จะอินดิวไปยังในผ่านตัวตัวปล่องอากาศนะครับที่เป็นโลหะแล้วมันก็จะไปทําให้เกิดสัญญาณรบกวนใน Data ในระบบไฟฟ้าในวบสื่อสารบอกว่าถูกต้องก็คือว่าเราก็จะต้องทําให้ส่วนที่เป็นล่อฟ้านะครับดาวคอนดักเตอร์ลงมาเนี่ยลงมาโดยที่ไม่ใช่เป็นการไปผ่านตัวตัวท่อนะครับตัวตัวตัวปล่องอันนี้คือคือสิ่งที่ต้องการเน้นว่าเราสามารถคอนโทรลเส้นทางของการเกิดฟ้าผ่านะครับให้มันลงสู่ดินได้โดยไม่ไปมีเหมือนกับในรูปสายมือนะครับที่ทําให้เกิดการเหนียวนําแล้วก็สร้างสัญญาณรบกวนไปที่พวกดาต้าลายพวกอ่าพาวเวอร์ลายนะครับ Thank you Hi Next please Okay um, Here I just want to uh, mention that there are different classes uh, depending on the rise time and this is the uh, pulse duration time There are different classes of uh, uh, search protection devices, and depending on where you want to and to, against which one you want to protect, you have to you have to choose the right, right class. But uh, normally nowadays, the new uh, devices they can also handle uh, uh, two classes together. So okay. And why do we need this this equipotential grounding here? I have said okay, this depends on the on the on th actually three different uh, purposes. The one is uh, safety against touching for people that they don't get an electric shock. This means the housing, if it is not fully isolated by plastic, if it has metal housing, this must be grounded with this wire. If not, yeah, people can die. And then uh, we need the functional grounding. This means uh, if uh, if 
devices or products are in different levels, yeah, different buildings, then you have ground, uh, you have uh, different voltage offset between the buildings, and these are then the so-called equipotential uh, bonding, meaning that uh, the safety and uh, the, uh, the the safety ground in the one building has the same level like the in, in another building, that there is not a difference. For one example, if a building, if office, huge, huge factory uses Ethernet cable, normally if you, if you use uh, a gigabit Ethernet, for example, the, um, the Ethernet cable should be shielded. I know many people don't use the shielded because shielded cable is more expensive, but then you will never have the data rate. If you want to have really the data rate, you need a shielded cable, Ethernet cable. And if the shielded Ethernet cable is 100 meter long between one and the other building, and you have uh, you don't have a proper grounding here, you will have uh, current flowing from the one device to the other device. And then the failure current switch will switch off the whole power. Uh, and this is why we need uh, equipotential grounding. And the lightning here, yeah, you know, this is, uh, goes into the, into the earth, into the, the ground for lightning protection. Okay, this is uh, what I have told you already. This is the different purposes for equipotential grounding. Good. Then we talked about cable shielding. Cable shielding, uh, I asked you, uh, do we need to connect the cable shield on both sides or on one side or not at all? Yeah. This shielding, how, how to do to the housing? Do we need this or not to connect? Or can we just cut it like it is done many times? Yeah. And I explained to you uh, that we need a cable shield connected to the ground on beginning of the cable and end of the cable to the housing. If it is not connected on one side, it does not, it doesn't shield against the magnetic field. So it needs a, a connection on the in beginning and on the end of the cable. Only then it works like a, uh, like a common mode choke here where you have a field compensation inside the cable here and it can shield against the magnetic field. A one side shielded cable only uh, shields the electric field contribution, not the magnetic field. And I have calculated this with some easy formula. And there I showed uh, that uh, each coaxial cable has an has a cutoff frequency. And the cutoff frequency of a coaxial cable is not the frequency at the high end, not high frequency. It's uh, the low end, meaning, uh, for example, do I have it here? No. Uh, I showed you that an RG58 cable, for example, which you use for measurement instrument, does not shield very well below 9 kilohertz or 10 kilohertz because it is, has something to do with the losses in the cable shield. This I explained. And to higher frequencies, there is normally no limit. The limit is only because of losses and in imperfect, let's say, shielding efficiency or effectiveness. This is why some cable cables don't work, let's say, beyond one gigahertz. Yeah? Important, there's the cutoff frequency, and the cutoff frequency of the cables is given in the data sheet of the cables. So it doesn't, does not make very much sense if you go in a shop and buy any cable, you should know which one. There are different, di different parameters which have to be considered. Okay, then I said, okay, for low frequencies, radio frequencies in the range, no, uh, audio frequencies in the range below 15, 20 kilohertz, it makes sense to uh, the connect the, the load, like uh, amplifier, for example, to the shield and not to the ground, because as you just heard, we have a problem at the low frequency range because the, of the cutoff frequency. This is why, for example, an RG58 cable uh, for oscilloscope it doesn't work very well for audio uh, amplifier. There you get noise. Okay. <clears throat> and then I said, okay, if you buy uh, a cable um, which should have a shield, yeah, you get what you pay for. So if you go to the shop, for example, you go to the shop uh, 
uh, you go to uh, to Big C and buy an, an change cable for, for audio. You know, this one with the red, yellow, and white uh, connectors. Yeah? Then, and you, you pay only, let's say, 50 baht, then yeah, you get a 50 baht cable. That doesn't work. Because the shield, uh, the, the wire inside is carbon and not copper. There is no shield. Or if there is a shield, this is very, let's say, this is only a, a fabric uh, with carbon. The, the quality is very poor, and this then cause EM, can cause EMC problems and make your make your product, your amplifier or your computer broken. This here, for example, is an HDMI cable I bought uh, here in Germany, and I paid about uh, ten thousand baht for this cable. Uh, five meter was five meter HDMI for a lab, and you see. Long wire connection here, grounding, very bad, very poor. Cutted wires inside, yeah, which cause really a capacitive coupling because they are not terminated. Uh, you see this one here, this is plastic, only vaporized on one side. So the aluminum foil doesn't work here for the shielding. And here, this, the coverage of this shield here is very, very low, very below 80%. So this is a completely overpaid cable, very much money very poor quality and as you can see when you make emc tests yeah so you get what you pay for yeah? you must check exactly what kind of cable you buy and if you have if you have a factory and you you, you sell many 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 cables buy one open it check it and look what is inside yeah here i have then told about the, the issues uh, uh, the cables yeah uh, sometimes the housing is plastic only and here the there was a there was a cable, uh, cable the, the, the braid here, the, the cable sheet was connected not to the housing because there was a plastic over it. So very, very, very bad. Yeah. Okay. And this was the, yeah, the uh, let's say the part one summary. Okay. Uh, if you have questions, we can again talk about it. And uh, uh, if everything is clear, I go to the part two. Okay, before I go to part two, I think, uh, okay. so this is a very important question that they have asked me, that the air shield of our air, if it doesn't shield, it will open both electric field and magnetic field. But if the shield of the front of the front, it will shield in the part of the front 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 of the front. นะครับแต่ว่าถ้าชิลทั้งสองปลายมันก็จะชิลตัวแมกนติกฟิลนะฮะสนามแม่เหล็กอันนี้ก็ก็ขอเคลียร์ประเด็นมีก่อนนะครับ next please the next is the part two now we start the new content uh, yeah shielding enclosures so uh, yeah how to how to start if you must make a product with a PCB, yeah, some some computer board with uh, I don't know a Arduino processor or something interfaces, some computer board, you have two possibilities. You can put it in a plastic housing, or you can put it in a metal housing. If you put it in a plastic housing, you cannot connect any shield. Huh? You can must uh, connect the shield to the PCB ground. If you have a metal housing, you can connect the shielded the shield of the cable to the metal housing, and vice versa. If it is an industrial an industrial application, must control a machine, and you put it in a plastic housing, and somebody comes very close with the mobile telephone, for example, to your computer, the computer freezes, blocks, and somebody have a serious problem with. The machine, I have seen this in uh, some some factories already that people got hurt, yeah? only because of the plastic housing, no shielding. So it depends uh, of the uh, on the application, and it, it depends on the risk assessment. What I mentioned before, how to set up the whole thing. But even if you have a metal housing. Uh, metal is not metal, and uh, how to make the 
you know, a housing has six sides, yeah? front, back, left, right, top, and bottom. And this has to be connected together. And why? How is this working? How is the shielding uh, principle? This I would like uh, to show you in the next slides. Uh, we have to start. Don't worry, I don't make now a, a RF, let's say, a RF lecture. No, if you want to have a lecture about electromagnetic uh, field theory, I can give it to you, but this we make separate, not today. Uh, the electromagnetic wave, uh, we have to learn a little bit about it, that we understand how shielding works. An electromagnetic wave has normally can be separated uh, into an electric contribution and a magnetic contribution. So a ma magnetic field and an electric field. By the way, this is wrong here. Yeah? The magnetic field is the H and the electric field is the E. This is uh, just mixed here. Yeah? Uh, <clears throat> and uh, the, next, the next important uh, parameter is, uh, let's say, the distance between the ele electromagnetic wave uh, where you measure and the source. So the distance between uh, yeah, the antenna, for example, the cable, which radiates the energy to another device. This depends if we have a near field or far field constellation. And uh, then we ha also have to talk about what kind of source we have if we have an like here shown a loop or if we have just an electric field antenna a monopole just a piece of cable and this is uh, why i talked here type of generating the source yeah depending on the source and depending on the source and if depending on the distance you will have different uh, let's say proportions between the electric and the magnetic field and this is called then wave impedance so uh, in the in the far field in the far field for example which is uh, lambda divided by 2 pi uh, there uh, we have the near field far field uh, transition you know we have th 377 ohms wave impedance yeah this is the far field wave impedance and if this contribution between e and h is different then we have another wave impedance and this happens in the near field area for example in the housing itself in a product itself uh, where we have electromagnetic sources yeah. so example the source with a large current compared to the voltage is a current source and for example a wire loop like this one in the literature it's called fitzgerald dipole uh, you can just call it a loop antenna and the loop antenna has a an low impedance. Why? Because high current and a low voltage. So the predominant uh, radiation from this antenna in the near field is magnetic. In the far field, depending on the wavelengths yeah, of, the, uh, of the signal, it has same an electromagnetic wave. So this is one example. Another example, if we talk about a dipole like here, yeah, for example, on the roof, when you when you look for when you have a terrestrial antenna to the television, that's a dipole antenna. Or if it has only one part, so only only this one here, then it's a monopole antenna. This has a high voltage and a low current. So meaning here at the input here, it has a high impedance and uh, the the, 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 in the near field, uh, the source, the wave source is predominantly the electric field. Why do I tell you this? Yeah, as mentioned, uh, in the near field area, which is uh, closer, the distance closer than lambda divided by 2 pi, we have to differentiate between the electric and the magnetic field. If we don't do this, we don't understand the shielding and we make a wrong shielding of the housing and as i mentioned in the in the far field we have a plane wave so if the distance from the source from for, what is the source for example an electromagnet and an, an pcb with some electronic on it if the distance is farther away than lambda divided by 2 pi lambda is the wavelength of the disturbance signal then we have a plane wave with an impedance of 377 ohms this is the self-impedance of the free space. Uh, 
So this we have to consider. Yeah, going, I don't want to tell more about the uh, field theory. If somebody is interested, we can make another seminar about this, then I can talk about the details of this, but I think here it is not necessary now. If we talk about a metal shield, if you want to shield some uh, electromagnetic wave, some electric or magnetic field, we have to understand that this doesn't work like an umbrella. Yeah, uh, that if a raindrop comes, it is just uh, reflected or stays here and drops down. No, no. In a metal shield, uh, the fields, they go into the metal shield. So meaning a part of the shield is, a part of the energy is reflected, but another part goes inside. And there is also a part which goes outside here. Yeah. <clears throat> This has something to do, uh, which I don't want to explain, just that you hear the name. This has something to do with the quantum mechanics that we have something like an evanescent wave here, which is uh, partly reflected, but goes also partly through it. This is the background about this. This is quantum physics, but uh, it, it, it is sufficient if you remember some part is reflected here and some part goes into it. And there is also some energy penetrating the whole metal and going out at the other side. So the wave penetrates, causes charges inside, yeah? it generates currents inside. Uh, you have surely heard about uh, eddy currents and things like this. And the fields is compensated partly and goes out at another side, but attenuated. And how much goes outside here? Depends on the metal behavior here, what kind of metal we use, how thick we will go into detail soon, and the kind of the wavelengths and the energy we have at the source. Do you want to summarize? Was a lot of material. อ่าในส่วนของการชิลนี่นะครับมันก็จะมีเค้าได้อธิบายว่าในส่วนของมันอาจจะไม่เหมือนลมนะครับลมเนี่ยมันก็รีเฟล็กต์อย่างเดียว
Here we have air, this is the metal, and here we have air again. So this is this here is a metal shield, shield metal, huh? shield material. Some of the electromagnetic waves goes to the shield and is reflected. This is called reflection attenuation, reflection attenuation. Yeah? Some of the field goes inside and then it is reflected inside the metal, going here like this, like this, inside the metal. This has something to do that the wave impedance of the shielding metal here is much lower than the wave impedance of the air. So this is same like in the optics. Uh, this is, uh, if, for example, in glass, at, on the inside the glass you have reflections. And here you have it in the metal going fast back for this is. And then in, if it is reflected inside, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. This is called the absorption attenuation, absorption. So inside this reflection, always the, the wave gets smaller, smaller, smaller in the amplitude and turning this electromagnetic energy into heat, into losses. So this is then inside the absorption attenuation. And some of the energy goes out at the other side of the metal. This is then the rest the transmitted wave here, which goes through. Yeah? And this is then, and, and the difference between this incident wave and this one here is called shielding attenuation or shielding effectiveness. Yeah, you see here the total shielding attenuation is uh, 20 logarithm. It's uh, the value is in decibel in dB is this one divided by this one. Yeah, and this all together is the reflection loss, which goes away, the absorption loss, which is inside. Yeah? And uh, there is another thing which is called correction factor. If you have two, if this is too thin, then you have multiple reflections going out here. But this we don't need to consider. This is a, let's say, quite complicated factor. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is minor. This has only five or six dB. But these three uh, components are to, to be seen together. So. Important energy going here, divided by energy going out. The logarithm multiplied by 20 is the shielding effectiveness. Good. Um, but now we know, okay, shielding effectiveness. Hi. Can I point out yes? uh, slide number uh, 37, yes. Uh, this is the most ประเด็นที่เขาบอกว่าค่า shielding effectiveness นะครับภาษาไทยเราก็เรียกเรียกว่าประสิทธิผลในการอา่ shield หรือภา,ภาษาราชการก็เรียกว่าประสิทธิผลของการกำบังขึ้นนะครับดูจากอะไรครับดูจากว่าตัวพลังงานหรือตัวเวฟที่ตกลงไปเนี่ยมีค่าเท่าไหร่นะครับก็คือตัวพลังงานของสนามไฟฟ้าที่เข้าไปหารด้วยที่มันปลุกออกมาถ้าเกิดว่ามันมีอ่ามันชุบได้ดีมากเนี่ยตัวที่เป็น e สามนะครับก็คือจะไม่มีเลยอันนั้นก็คือมันก็จะมีค่าการชิวเอฟเฟกติเมนที่ที่สูงก็คือดีครับชิวชิวได้ดีแต่ถ้าเกิดว่ามันเข้ามาเท่าไหร่ออกเท่านั้นแสดงว่าไอ้ค่าอ่าการชิวดิ้งนั้นแทบจะไม่มีผลเลยเพราะฉะนั้นก็มันขึ้นอยู่กับอัตราส่วนระหว่างความเข้มของสนามไฟฟ้าที่ตกที่ตกนะครับกับที่ทะลุออกไปเป็นเป็นสัดส่วนค่าชิลดิ้งแอปเปิลเนตที่สูงแปลว่ามันชิลได้ดีเพราะฉะนั้นไม่มีสัญญาณทะลุออกไปนะครับขอบคุณครับ next please thank you okay uh, okay enough with the shielding effectiveness uh, because if you look at the data if you have a very good housing closed at uh, all six sites we will have a shielding effectiveness of 100 dB or something which is uh, for normal products not realistic yeah the shielding of them we have uh, to look closer to the making a housing making a shield for a product and this has to be divided into two aspects the one we talked just talked about is the material and the material. So the, this material, shield material, 
the, the, the efficiency, or let's, let's say the shielding effectiveness of the material depends on the frequency of the noise signal, the geometry of the shield, meaning how big is it and how thick, uh, the position inside uh, the chass chassis. If you have inside the uh, the noise source, it depends on the distance. You know, the, I told you before, it's depending on the near field, far field uh, geometry. And then we need to know if it's a magnetic or an electric field. Yeah? And then the material parameters itself, this is the magnetic permeability uh, and uh, magnetic permeability, which is my R, huh? mu R, and the conductivity on the surface, the material. So here, if it has a very high magnetic permeability, like uh, steel, for example, or if it is, has, is copper, which, there, which has a magnetic permeability of nearly one, uh, we talk about the conductivity, if the copper is very, have a very high conductivity, and for example, uh, um, steel has a much lower. Huh? But what is the most important issue and where all the problems in housing, shielding come from, are discontinuities. So slots, gaps, holes, openings, yeah, they reduce the shielding effectiveness very much. What do I mean with this? Uh, this I explained already. Let's skip this page. Uh, when we have a, when we have a uh, shielding effectiveness, we have to differentiate between the electric and the magnetic field, as I mentioned already. And the parameters, uh, how this thing shields, is, are very much depending on the distance, on the frequency, and on the parameters of the material. I don't want to go into this detail. This is only for reference that you see we have the absorption part, we have the reflection part, and we have something which is important for very thin shields. But important, the frequency of the noise signal, the conductivity of the material, the magnetic permeability of the material. So for the absorption, also the same parameters, like for the reflection and the multi multiple reflections are important. This here, if you wonder about this one, this is the skin effect, which is here important for the multiple reflections. So we have the magnetic permeability, the conductivity, the frequency. Yeah? And depending if you want to shield a magnetic field or an electric field, you have to choose another material. So if you want to shield 50 and 100 hertz magnetic field and you use a copper, this can never work because for the copper, yeah, the, the, the magnetic permeability is too small. So you cannot, you see here, if you need a high, high absorption and you use here a copper which has only a permeability of one, you won't get a very high shielding effectiveness for the magnetic field. So the formula, they are complicated, but they can show very simple things. So for the magnetic field uh, shielding, you need a high permeability. So if you use steel, which has a permeability of five or 10,000, depending on the steel, it is the difference if I have here 10,000 or if I have one. This everybody can understand. Yeah. And you see if the frequency is very high, so the magnetic field can be shielded very easily. But if you have 50 Hertz here, and if you use copper one, yeah, then you have a very low absorption loss. And this is the message why I want to show this. It's normally, it's very easy to explain. Uh, so if you need an elect shielding from electric field, requires material with high electric conductivity. And so the shielding effectiveness is high over the entire frequency range. Yeah? Because if, if this is very high, and if this is very high, then you have already a very high shielding effectiveness. And for the magnetic field, you need a high permeability. So this is what here the formulas tell you. Enough with this. <laughs> here you see the chart for copper. Frequency. Hello, Hank. Yes. Important one. Can you back to the slide number 40, please? This is the first question. In the shielding, we can see that 
นะครับตัวที่เป็นอิเล็กติกฟิลเราไม่ได้ติดฟิลว่าชิวดิเอฟเฟกติเนสแต่ละตัวเป็นยังไงยกตัวอย่างตะกี้เขาพูดถึงว่าถ้าเอาเอาอ่าความถี่ห้าสิบเฮิร์ตนี่นะครับห้าความถี่ห้าสิบเฮิร์ตเนี่ยถ้าเราเอาพวกทองแดงมาชิวมันไม่มีประโยชน์สําหรับห้าสิบเฮิร์ตเพราะว่าอะไรครับเพราะว่าค่ามีรีเลทีฟเปอร์มีบริตี้ของทองแดงเนี่ยมันน้อยมากเมื่อมันน้อยมากการชิวมันก็ไม่ก็ก็ไม่เกิดผลมันจะเกิดผลก็คือค่าเรียลทีฟเปอร์มิตี้สูงเช่นพวกมิวเมทัลพวกเหล็กเพราะฉะนั้นการที่เอาเหล็กจะสามารถชิวความถี่ห้าสิบเฮิร์ตได้มิวเมทัลยิ่งชิวได้ดีแต่ทองแดงจะไม่ชิวเลยนะครับอันนี้อันนี้คือกรณีที่หนึ่งกลับมากรณีที่สองก็คือตรงอ่าพวกความถี่อ่าความถี่สูงนะครับความถี่สูงเนี่ยทำไมตัวตัวทองแดงถึงชิวความถี่สูงได้ดีขอดูสมการที่สองนะครับตัวชิวดิ้งเอฟเฟกตของแมกเนติกนะฮะ SM เพราะว่าตัวมิวอาตัวดีเดทีฟเปอร์มิวบิลิตี้ของมันเนี่ยเป็นตัวหารเมื่อตัวหารมีค่าเป็นหนึ่งเพราะฉะนั้นแล้วไอตัวค่าของรีเฟล็กชันมันมันเลยมีผลเยอะเพราะฉะนั้นการการชิวด้วยความถี่สูงด้วยทองแดงเพราะว่ามันสามารถที่จะสะท้อนหรือว่ารีเฟลชันได้ได้ดีเนี่ยนะครับเพราะฉะนั้นการชิวไอปรัญญาของตัวทองแดงมันจะอยู่ที่ความถี่สูงและใช้ทองแดงนะครับส่วนแอบซอปชันมันจะไม่เกิดเท่าไหร่ที่ความถี่สูงแต่มันจะเกิดรีเฟลชันที่ความถี่สูงครับประเด็นถ้าเกิดมีคําถามที่ผมมีข้อสรุปนะครับมีข้อคิดเห็นมีคําถามอินเพิ่มเติมเข้ามาเดี๋ยวผมจะพยายามชําเลืองดูคอมเมนต์ของท่านนะครับเกิดเกิดท่านใดมีคําถามขอบคุณมากครับอันเน็กซ์พีทไฮทั้งคิวย่าโอเคเออคาปเดอะคาปเปอร์ชิลด์ยูโน่เออเปอร์เมอเบลิตี้แมกเนติกเปอร์เมอเบลิตี้ของคาปเปอร์สมันเออคอนดักติวิตี้คือสมันสวัสดีครับนี่คือสวัสดีครับเพราะว่ามันอาจจะมากขึ้นนี่ไม่ควรจะมากขึ้นเพราะว่าแอร์ก็มีสมันและนี่คือความถี่สูงที่เราต้องคิดถึงความถี่สูงที่มาจากภายนอกนี่คือความถี่สูงที่มาจากภายนอกนี่คือความถี่สูงที่มาจากภายนอกนี่คือความถี่สูงที่มาจากภายนอกนี่คือความถี่สูงที่มาจากภายนอกนี่คือความถี่สูงที่มาจากภายนอกนี่คือความถี่สูงที่มาจากภายนอกนี่คือความถี่สูงที่มาจากภายนอกนี่คือความถี่สูงที่มาจากภายนอกนี่คือความถี่สูงที่มาจากภายนอกนี่คือความถี่สูงที่มาจากภายนอกนี่คือความถี่สูงที่มาจากภายนอกนี่คือความถี่สูงที่มาจากภายนอกนี่คือความถี่สูงที่มาจากภายนอกนี่ Okay, then we have here the frequency in the chart, and then you see here the absorption, which is you see copper absorption, meaning absorption loss uh, inside the metal for very low frequency, almost nothing. This is what I mentioned before. Uh, this is what we just here. You know, if you have here one, the absorption for the magnetic field is very small. So here you see uh, the reflected. Magnetic field. You see the reflected electromagnetic wave here, which is quite high for low frequencies. Also reflected uh, electromagnetic wave, and then <coughs> you see here the incident electromagnetic, incident magnetic. So you see, for low frequencies, we can not absorb very much for the magnetic field. The electromagnetic field is very high. And what I have to tell you, shielding attenuation about 100 dB above. Above 100 dB cannot be measured. This is only a simulation or calculation. Calculation with the computer. If you have more than 100 dB efficiency and in, in the shielding attenuation, it's uh, only theoretically. So shielding effectiveness is normally between 40, 50, 60 dB for realistic values. But if we look to the metal steel shield, you see. The absorption is for lower frequencies already much higher. Uh, for the magnetic field, you see, uh, the magnetic field here has a very high, a very high attenuation. Yeah. So for that's reflected. You see, the reflection loss, reflection loss for steel is more than for low frequencies already more than several hundred dB. So we can achieve a very, very high. 
uh, shielding effectiveness with a metal shield with a steel shield, not with copper. If you go into the if you go to into the EMC labs, yeah, and you look the absorber absorbing uh, chamber, for example, or you look to the small shielding chambers, you will see all these chambers are made of steel, yeah, because for the steel you have a very high efficiency for the attenuation. This is uh, the message here shown in these diagrams. Okay, uh, I have summarized the whole thing because then you don't need to show in, uh, look into the details. So in case of electric field, if we have most electric field or an ele electromagnetic wave, a plane wave, we need a material which has a good conductivity like copper, aluminum to maximize the reflection loss because reflection loss is the big contribution of the efficiency, of the shielding efficiency. In case of high magnetic field uh, in the range of some 100 kilohertz, we need a good conductor, so like copper, or a material with a high magnetic permeability, like steel. So for a magnetic field in the higher frequency, we can use good permeability or also copper in higher frequencies. For the low frequency magnetic field, yeah, below 10 kilohertz, we need a material with a high magnetic permeability to maximize the absorption loss. Yeah. So uh, the reflection loss varies, varies depending on the type of the field. The absorption loss is, can, you can say, independent of if it is an electric or magnetic field. Yeah. So um, how thick should housing be? So if it is stable for your product and um, it can withstand, withstand uh, let's say some, some kilogram, meaning for example, uh, one millimeter or 0.5 millimeters should be enough. You don't need uh, five millimeter steel or, or copper shield. This can be quite thin. This is what I can add here. So this is the summary of the whole thing of about the materials and the electric and magnetic field behavior. Hi, um, can I uh, say in Thai word? It's important for Dr. Hai said that 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 ตัวที่มีประสิทธิผลในเรื่องของการชิวก็คือการรีเฟล็กชันนะครับเพราะฉะนั้นการใช้แผ่นทองแดงอ่าพวกทองแดงหรืออลูมิเนียมเนี่ยมันจะชิวความถี่สูงได้ด้วยการสะท้อนคลื่นนะครับแล้วก็ในกรณีที่อ่าส่วนที่เป็นความถี่ต่ำตัวที่จะทําการอ่าชิวได้ดีก็คือการใช้พวกวัสดุที่มีค่า high permeability นะครับค่ามิวพวกมิวเมทัลเช่นแผ่นแผ่นพวกทำหม้อแปลงบางๆนะครับที่เป็นตัว laminate บางๆเนี่ยไอ้พวกนั้นจะเป็นมิวเมทัลมีค่า d t permeability เป็นหลักหลายหมื่นไอ้พวกนี้แผ่นบางๆเนี่ยก็สามารถที่จะชิวที่ความถี่ต่ำโดยเพราะยิ่งพวก50เฮิร์นะครับเพราะฉะนั้น50เฮิร์ใช้แผ่นมนึกถึงหม้อแปลงไฮเฟชเชนซี่ไอ้พวกที่เป็นแผ่นแผ่นแอมอมบัตทำหม้อแปลงนะครับคนนั้นจะชิวอัพทีตัดได้อย่างดีนะครับก็ไม่จะเป็นจะต้องใช้วัสดุที่มีความหนามากเลือกค่าคุณสมบัติของอตัวเปอร์มีบิลิตี้หรือว่าคอนดักติวิตี้ที่เหมาะสมก็จะชิวได้นี่ครับก็ก็จะเป็นจังหวะดีนะครับที่จะขออนุญาตเบรกในในช่วงนี้ประมาณสักสิบนาทีนะครับเราจะได้กลับมาต่อในในภาคที่สอง Hi uh, shall we break for 10 minutes and then we come back to the next uh, session eight eight minutes seven minutes <laughs> <laughs> okay well, about okay. Ten, ten minutes okay yeah. then I have a coffee okay okay thank you ก็ก็กลับมาแล้วตอนนี้ตอนนี้บ่ายสอง42นาทีนะครับก็กลับมาบ่ายบ่าย2 52นาทีนะครับขอบคุณครับเ
ิดเปิดตรงนี้นะครับอาระหว่างนี้ท่านใดมีคําถามนะครับพิมพ์มาในไลน์ก็ได้ครับหรืออาจจะพูดขึ้นมาคุยระหว่างที่เบรกนี้ก็ได้นะครับผมผมผมไม่ได้เบรกผมแต่ถอนมากฝั่งแล้วก็จะได้ปรับปรุงแก้ไขเพิ่มเติมข้อมูลที่ที่เราต้องการนะครับมีท่านใดมีคําถามนะครับในในเซสชั่นที่ผ่านมาในในช่วงแรกที่ผ่านมาครับครับถ้าไม่มีก็เบรกตามสะดวกนะครับเรากลับมาตอนบ่ายบ่ายสองโมงห้าสิบสองนาทีนะครับขอบคุณครับปิดเสียงทดสอบทดสอบฮัลโหลไฮไอโยแบ็กเยสชัวโอเค Next one. The weather in uh, Germany. Raining or no raining? In Thailand, it's raining. A lot of raining. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yes, yes. Big rain. Yes, I know. Big rain. Big depression. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And here it's cold and rainy. Oh, it's so, already cold, right? ครับผู้เข้าร่วมประชุมทุกท่านครับตอนนี้ได้เวลาแล้วนะครับก็จะขออนุญาตเดินเรื่องต่อเลยนะครับอ่าดรฮายก็จะมาพูดถึง EMC ในอ่าเรื่องของการอ่า shielding นะครับพวก enclosure so please อ่าฮาย next please thank you yeah um, the next one is interesting issue very important um, If you have housing, one metal shield, another metal shield, another metal shield, and have here isolated, yeah, isolated meaning, for example, your plastic or color, huh? color, huh? and they are not connected together. You have a very very low shielding effectiveness. This. This thing here shields only against electric shield, electric fields, and not against magnetic fields, and very low. So if you make housing and have one sheet, one sheet, one sheet, one metal, one metal, another metal, and do not connect them together, no shielding effectiveness. If you connect together, only like here, yeah, here one screw, one screw, one screw, one screw. Or some solder or something, only spot. Then you have a better shielding effectiveness already, but it depends on the length here, distance. Yeah. If you have more, like here, you have already a high high shielding effectiveness. And if you solder together, if no gap, no hole, then you have a very high shielding effectiveness. Yeah. <clears throat> then it shields very high, and it depends on the thickness of the wall and the material. Then How it shields against the fields like we have seen before. Huh? So clear. Huh? If this is only some parts, no shielding effectiveness. Better, good. Solder together, very good. Very simple. Why? Yeah. Uh, this depends on the uh, magnetic and electric field contribution, as we will see on the next page. But what is the Message here. So uh, theoretically, like we discussed before here, uh, you can have a very, very, very high shielding effectiveness. We talk here of about 100, 150, 200 dB. But if we have holes and slots, yeah, and for display or and for for I don't know SIM card or for for ATM card or something, then the shielding effectiveness goes down. So opening seams, uh, slots they reduce in practice the housing uh, shielding effectiveness of the housing very much. So theoretically, no uh, no openings, no slots. The conductivity, permeability, and the wavelengths or the frequency are depending on the shielding effectiveness. But in practice, 
we have openings, we have seams, slots, yeah, and uh, color, yeah, where these, the, the metal sheets don't connect to each other. This is what in reality then makes the shielding effectiveness down, reduces the shielding effectiveness very much. So let's talk about this. If we have a housing, housing part of the, this is part of the housing and we have a slot, this will radiate. How will it radiate? Yeah, because you have PCB, two integrated circuits, some signal, clock frequency or from DC-DC converter, the switching frequency, current, yeah, square wave here. And this is a differential mode loop. It's a loop. And this loop causes a magnetic field. And this magnetic field, we will go through the slot here and radiate. And if this slot is high enough, you see this radiation here depends on the frequency here of the signal, the area of this loop here, the distance between this one and the antenna, and the current, no? sure, the amplitude, the current. Yeah? And this will radiate through the hole. This is why slots, openings, radiate electromagnetic energy. Yeah? And it doesn't matter if this, what we have here, is the source inside. So this F1 here, this, this is the radiation source. This here the, is this radiation source. This will cause electromagnetic energy. This will reflect here. And if you have one opening, this one is this one. <coughs> energy, which, which goes here we also go outside or reflect again, 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 and go outside. So here you have, if this noise source is inside, it will radiate very much because also due to reflections, some energy goes directly and some energy goes reflect, reflected inside, always go outside. This is why if you have one opening and have a noise source inside, it always will radiate somehow. If, if it is outside, big part of the energy is reflected and doesn't go into the housing. And some goes inside, will be reflected inside the metal and goes through. So this is why many times the immunity, interference immunity uh, of a product doesn't cause many times problems. It's always very strong, but emission goes outside because of the many multiple reflections inside. And if you have some, some hole, it will radiate. Yeah? So it is not the same if the noise source is outside or the noise source is inside. This has different effects. Yeah? Good. And <clears throat> if you have many openings, like here, many openings, they contribute together, meaning like this one for the for the ventilation, for the air, huh? or wire mesh here, yeah, for for dust, air, or something, or for, for cooling. The shielding effectiveness in total is same like uh, let's say the calculation of paralleling resistors. Huh? You know, if this is R, and you have resistors in parallel, they also uh, add together like the inversion of each of the values. So shielding effectiveness in total <coughs> is, uh, is this one and this one and this one. So if you have many, the shielding effectiveness goes down very much. Yeah? This has also to be considered. So this one and this one and this one, always the inversion. Yeah? Uh, zoomed up and invert inversion again, you have then the total shielding effectiveness. Yeah, why is it like this? If this is a metal shield and you have no hole, the current induced or produced by electromagnetic wave can compensate, can compensate, same here. 
But if you have a opening, then the current goes like here and goes like here and will produce a potential difference here and can radiate outside. Yeah. You see here, this this cannot, but if you if you have many openings, then you can still have a current uh, compensation and this will have a sh higher shielding effectiveness like one long slot. Understood? So if you, if you can decide, make one big hole or make many small holes for air or something, more, many small openings are better than one big one. Because the big one here, as we will see, is depending on the wavelengths of the noise source, how much it radiates. Yeah. <clears throat> We say in, in theory or in, let's say in experience, we say a an, an slot like this one should have for practice if you make, a, you make a housing. And then you ask, yeah, how, much, how much can the distance here be? How big can I make this? Yeah, <laughs> how big can I make this? We say in experience, a slot should have about 20 dB attenuation. Yeah. Experience shows that an opening should have at least 20 dB shielding attenuation. Yeah, 20 dB. This slot here radiates uh, best when you have lambda divided by two of the distance here. So uh, if you look at 20 dB, you must look what electronic do I have inside the product? Because I must know what is the highest frequency in my product. Uh, and the highest frequency in my product are the harmonics of square wave signals. So if you have, for example, you have a microcontroller and the microcontroller works with a clock frequency of 100 megahertz, you cannot use 100 megahertz as the highest frequency because the, the square, square wave signal has harmonics. This we will talk next time about this. And so and, and you will have maybe the seventh harmonics uh, of the square wave signal to consider. This is then 700 megahertz. Yeah, and if you have a frequency of 700 megahertz, it's somewhere here between. So you should have a, the, the openings, the slot should not be more than two centimeters, roughly 2.3 centimeters, 2.5 centimeters. If the slot is larger, longer than 2.5 centimeters, it will radiate more and it has a less attenuation of 20 dB and it can radiate. Uh, there is also one thing I have to consider here, uh, not to forget, it depends on the distance between the slot here and the current loop. So the distance, the distance here from here to here depends <coughs> how much this radiates. This is why, uh, why some, some people, they go into the EMC lab and measure and then they have for example one cable inside the product and change the position of the cable and then it rain uh, it changes also the radiation they come next time to the emc lab and have higher not the same re result like before because if the distance is large between the uh, opening here the slot and the current loop if the distance is large yeah uh, the, the radiation is high if the conductor loop here, this loop, and the slot are in the right angle to each other. So if the slot is like this, and the loop is like this, then we have a high emission. Yeah. If we change the polarization, so if the, the loop is in parallel, like here, then the radiation is small. Sorry, going, going back. Uh, and here, if the distance is very low, so the, the loop is very close to this opening here. Then the radiation is high if the conductor loop and the slot are in parallel. So it changes from the distance. This also has to be considered. So you see, this is quite complicated issue, which must be understood. And then you see if, uh, there are cables inside a an, an product, for example, who couple, they couple to the, and change the distance, you will have no stable EMC behavior. Huh? Good, go to the next one. So 
the interference, so the emission of an opening depends on four factors, four things I have told you. The size of the hole, size of the hole inside the metal housing, electric or magnetic field, distance, distance between the noise source, PCB microcontroller and the housing, and the wavelengths. These four factors are the key factors of how much an opening hole in a housing radiates. So this is the summary here. So uh, then we will talk about seals and gaskets. So maybe good idea, Dr. Verachet, if you summarize this a little bit. ครับก็จะเห็นว่าในโลกความเป็นจริงมันต้องมีการใช้งานไม่ว่าจะเป็นเครื่องถอนเงินหรือว่าอุปกรณ์ไฟฟ้าที่มีการระบายความร้อนก็ต้องมีช่องนะครับการที่ทําเป็นช่องอที่มีเงื่อนไขเช่นมีช่องขนาดใหญ่แน่นอนว่ามันกระทบกับเรื่องของการชิลสิทธิผลการชิลก็จะหายไปนะครับเพราะฉะนั้นเขาก็เลยมีวิธีการอันที่หนึ่งก็คือในรูปสไลด์ที่เห็นเป็นเป็นรูรูรูรูเล็กๆนะครับการที่ทําเป็นรูเล็กๆได้หลายรูเนี่ยดีกว่าที่จะทําเป็นรูใหญ่ๆรูเดียวอันนี้ก็ชัดเจนว่าในเรื่องของการจะเรียกว่าการรั่วของคลื่นก็ได้นะครับถ้าให้มันแพร่เข้ามาแล้วก็ถ้าในกรณีที่จำเป็นต้องมีช่องพวกนั้นเนี่ยมันก็มีทางออกอีกวิธีหนึ่งนะครับว่าถ้ามันช่องที่มีขนาดเป็นสี่เหลี่ยมพื้นผ้าและมันมีความหนามันนะครับการที่มันมีความหนาเนี่ยช่วยให้การชิวนั้นมีประสิทธิผลยังยังอยู่นะครับแม้แม้แม้จะมีช่องเป็นช่องสี่เหลี่ยมพื้นผ้าแต่ถ้ามันมีความหนาพอนะครับมันก็จะทําใหอ่าการการชิวนั้นยังยังเป็นไปได้นะครับอันนี้ก็เป็นเป็นวิธีการหนึ่งแล้วก็เขาก็อธิบายในเรื่องของอ่าเรื่องของความถี่นะครับว่าเวลาเราพูดถึงความถี่อ่าที่เป็นสเปกตรัมของความถี่อย่างเช่นความถี่สามสิบเมกะเฮิร์ตซ์ถ้าเป็นสามสิบเมกะเฮิร์ตซ์เนี่ยถ้ามีคล็อกคล็อกของมันเนี่ยเป็นสี่เหลี่ยมนะครับเพราะฉะนั้นสแควร์เวฟเวฟฟอร์มเนี่ยมันก็จะมีฟันเดเมนเท่าอยู่ที่ห้าแต่สามสิบมิลเฮิร์ตซ์แล้วก็จะมีฟันดมอ่ามีไอ้พวกคาร์บอนิกที่เป็นตัวเล็กที่นะครับสามห้าเจ็ดเก้าเกิดขึ้นเพราะฉะนั้นมันก็อาจจะมีความถี่อ่าเล็กได้หลายความถี่ที่สูงขึ้นอ่าในการในการในการพิจารณานะครับอ่าพอมีความถี่สูงขึ้นคาร์บอนิกพวกนี้มันยังมีมีอบิจูดมีค่าอยู่เนี่ยเลยต้องเอาอ่าความถี่ที่สูงขึ้นเนี่ยเอามาเป็นตัวกําหนดว่าไอขนาดของตัวสล็อตเล้งเนี่ยมันจะเลยต้องมันมันมันมันไม่สามารถจะใหญ่ได้นะครับมันต้องเล็กเพราะว่ามันมีผลของฮาร์โมนิกที่เป็นเพลสจากที่เป็นครอปต่างๆมีเกิดขึ้นนะครับนี่ก็คือประเด็นที่เขาเขาได้กล่าวรวมทั้งแพทเทิร์นของการอ่าพูลไลเซชันของของของลูกด้วยนะครับของของไอลูกอ่าเซเลนลูก Yes. Hi. Thank you. Next, please. You. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so, if you have metal housing and how to connect, uh, most important, most important, number one, remove color. Because I say many times when I uh, when I uh, work in EMC lab and look for where people, where customers have the problem. They don't remove the color from the from the metal housing, and then uh, t h e s e two parts they cannot connect. And I have seen. Then I said, <clears throat> people who make a housing, this is metal sheet. This is maybe to connect here, and then they put ceiling. Yeah, they put a ceiling inside, like this one here. They put here inside, but they don't remove the color, so this can never contact. Yeah. So uh, you need high conductivity. This is normally very good. You can buy this in many companies. Yeah, 
and then uh, EMC companies, yeah, they, they uh, and put this inside here in this grove, but they must remove here the color and here also. Many people they use, for example, they use aluminium chassis, yeah, aluminium here. But aluminium on the surface after one week has very poor conductivity because it oxidizes. Yeah. And then you must remove this and then put here the sealing inside. The seals they cannot work when you have a color inside. Yeah. And <clears throat> And this also uh, is only necessary if if you have uh, if this one cannot make real contact. Yeah, if you remove the color and can make real good contact, then you don't need the ceiling. Yeah. Uh -huh. So uh, yeah, and if you press it too much or not enough, yeah, then also you have no contact. So uh, you must look. This groove here must have the proper size for the ceiling not only put something inside and it has no contact or it's too big and then it goes here outside yeah and you cannot connect this to together so uh, this must be you need a good mechanical engineer here for this you understand about this yeah this is not so easy because you see here <clears throat> the electrical properties of a, of a seal uh, something like this here uh, depending on shielding effectiveness uh, this is not all the same over the frequency and depending on the pressure you have here. Yeah? So the shielding effectiveness of, of this one, if you put here inside, you put this one here, it's not always same over the frequency. Yeah? This is different and depending also on the pressure. Yeah? So uh, this must fit here inside. Uh, if you press this too much, this gets uh, this the shielding effectiveness get get down. If you press it not enough, you don't have a shielding effectiveness. You still have here a, a gap inside. So this is mechanical engineering. You must look in the data sheet. Yeah, how big this is and how many uh, millimeters you can press or not. Yeah, this is mechanical design. <coughs> and then uh, over compression. Yeah. Uh, does does not give you the, the right con contact and makes the, the surface here the surface broken. You see why? Because here inside this is foam. Only outside this makes a good con connection. And if you press this, this gets broken. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And if you use two, have one and have another two, another one. Yeah, then you get 6 dB more. This is not very much. So make one good one is better than make two because two takes more money. It's more expensive. So this is the message here. Yeah. So there you see <clears throat> compression, meaning how much they press together. This one, 10%. So meaning if you have here one millimeter, you can press here only one point, uh, uh, 0.0 point nine millimeters, so only a little bit, not down to 50%. This does not work. Then the 10%, this one here, 50%, this can make more. And this this is the rubber with, uh, uh, with metal inside, yeah? The molded uh, gaskets, they can, they can have 15 to 30%. So depending on what kind of gasket you use. These are the flat seals, yeah? They have foam inside. This is foam with uh, carbon. Yeah, this can this you can press very much. This one, uh, this has another surface. Yeah, this you can press very much. And this one here, this get broken if you press more than thirty percent also. But this is the rubber, the rubber seals. So, not only choose one and press together with some screws. This is engineering design. Yeah? If you use this one. And also, if you start with the mechanical design, making a housing, and make like, like this or like this, forget it. This does not work. This is cheap, yes, cheap, but does not work. Because here you have the slot again, and if you press, yeah, then it opens more. And if you have design like this, you must remove here the color. If you don't remove the color, you have a long slot. And 
if this if you if you bend yeah carry the product then also this will open here this is not a stable con uh, stable construction yeah but if you go to designs like this one here and even like here put uh, an additional uh, additional screw and use here the conductive seal yeah then it's a professional design for industry and then you also can use it for emc shielding this here and this here you cannot use for emc shielding this is not reliable you carry the the housing from one room to another room and you have another result this is a very poor design yeah so it is and this you must think about in beginning and not later then put here some copper tape or put some screw later on that doesn't work yeah this is very poor design so in the beginning you must think already how to make the design <clears throat> what i i don't know if i show it on the next slide or not also this one here is important to consider i tell you now right away uh, is um, if somebody needs a design like this he can contact me later uh, เนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่ยเนี่
Sorry, I don't know what happened. Uh, suddenly, I had for 10 seconds no internet. It somehow, some, somewhere it interrupted. But okay, you could make the conclusion. And uh, are there some more questions so far? Or have you answered everything? <clears throat> I summarize about uh, in your uh, last five or six slides about the, the casket, about the connection, about the clothing uh, by the pen, uh, by the painting, uh, make some bad contact and also some casket to improve uh, the tubing effectiveness of the, of the enclosure. Yeah, this is, uh, this is very important when you start making a design and you use a housing, metal housing. Uh, it's good if you in, know exactly in the beginning uh, where, where to put the shields together, the metal shields, and then you can tape it before, before spraying the, the color, you know. You use a tape, the tape the, uh, the area which has, should have no color, and then you put the color, and then you remove the tape, and then you have a good contact. Yeah. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> here I said for the for the fixing fastening elements and for the uh, for the grooves and for the applications how much pressing force you need. So uh, for the most applications, yeah, uh, seven kilogram per square centimeter you need for an EMC seal that it really contacts to each other. Yeah. So uh, you must know about the pressure between the metal shields and not just put it together and then, this, then you will make it broken or it gets broken after half year or something, not stable in the, in the, uh, in the, in the field at the customer then. Yeah? And for the, for the uh, distance between the screws or the fasteners, whatever you use, yeah, if it is, if the metal cannot be bended, if it is rigid, yeah, then uh, smaller than 50 millimeters should be okay. And for the for sheets, which it can be bended, which are flexible a little bit, uh, smaller than two centimeters, yeah, then you are on the safe side for the connections. Yeah, so there are values for the mechanical engineers to consider. Good. Um, <clears throat> The important for, so this are the, again, maybe for understanding, when we talk about this, the distances, yeah? If you have sheets, like on the next page, sheets, then you should have here less than 20 millimeters, no? two centimeters. And if this is like this one, yeah? then you must put a gasket inside, no? or you will have a, an opening slot which radiates. And this, why? Because you see, this is, if you look at a metal shield, it always looks like this. It's never, never, never like one line. It, if you put, put it under the microscope and look, then you will see that it is, uh, that it has not an homogeneous surface. The surface has, is, is like this. Yeah? And then uh, you need a ceiling. Yeah? Ceiling we had before, something like, like this. Uh, this you can put then here between, and then it is closed. Uh, and the distance, this is what I mentioned before, if you need 20 dB shielding effectiveness, and you know you have uh, uh, a uh, 300 megahertz process processor, you must use less than one and a half centimeters. Or if this is, for example, for, for uh, uh, for television, one uh, and you, you need a TV amplifier for high frequency. It's the same. So always, when the electronic works with high frequency, you must use this distance. Okay. <clears throat> so the shielding effectiveness of the whole thing, yeah, varies with the pressure. I mentioned before. Go back here. The pressure you put on the seal. And I mentioned before, this pressure is depending on the shielding attenuation. 
So you see here the pressure in bar and here the shielding attenuation. And if the pressure is too small, you have a small shielding attenuation. If you make more pressure, the shielding attenuation you see here between, let's say, I don't know, 30, 35 dB going down, going up, up more than 100 dB, yeah, you see. So you must have the pressure, but not too much because otherwise it gets broken. Yeah? So depending on if you have your electromagnetic wave or the magnetic field, most influence you have with the electromagnetic wave, you see already at low frequencies, 300 megahertz, it can have a very big difference yeah, in the shielding attenuation if you change the pressure. And we say, so uh, from experience about eight bar should be okay. You don't need 20 bar or something. Eight, eight, seven, eight bar should be okay here, this red, for sufficient pressure. Yeah? So stem seal with highly conductive surface, meaning this is <coughs> something like, like this one or this one. Yeah, this one should have at least a seven bar, eight bar that you can have a good shielding attenuation. Yeah. Good. Next one. This is what I mentioned before. If you have, if you have something like this, two metal shields together, they have an impedance electrically, and if you want to make a good shielding effectiveness. Make, make it like this. Why? Because this tunnel here makes something like a waveguide effect. This can be calculated according to, uh, to the calculation, to the attenuation of a waveguide. And if you make only spot contacts here, distance D, yeah, here you have the formula, then you can have already a quite good attenuation. This is what I mentioned in the beginning when I said make many of this one, then you have already a good attenuation if you cannot close it completely. If you can close completely with a gasket, then it's okay. But if you cannot, maybe it is too small or something, then make like this and then you have the waveguide effect. Yeah. So you know the microwave oven, yeah? My, everybody has in room microwave oven. Uh, the microwave oven works at 2.45 gigahertz. Huh? And uh, the door in front is made like this one, that it has a good attenuation at 2.45 gigahertz because there is, no, there is no gasket inside. This is made with the waveguide effect. If you look at your microwave oven. Huh? Yeah, and uh, Summarized again, the shielding effectiveness of uh, openings here, yeah, like, like this grid here, depends on the area and on the number, how many we have. Yeah? So if you have an opening for, for, for uh, air condition, for example, yeah? Yeah, air in, not air condition in the room, air condition in the product, uh, in Passatai Patlom, uh, in the product, then, and you, you want to close this. Then you must look how, how big is the area of one opening and how many do I have? Yeah, uh, if they are too big, the attenuation is very small. And if they are too many, also the attenuation is very small. And this has to be considered and can normally also be calculated. So if one, if somebody has an issue, can contact me, I can calculate how much attenuation you need for your product. I didn't show the formula here because it's uh, then, too much, huh? but if somebody is interested how to calculate, then I can support here. Yeah. And some uh, from the real, let's say real world, what I have seen in, in, in practice, if I check computer in EMC lab, yeah, if this is open here, you know, in the computer, that's a, uh, that's a tower computer workstation or something. If this is missing, yeah. <laughs> have a big problem with radiation. Huh? And also if you have, you, you remember this is a connection panel here, a printer, USB, uh, HDMI, Ethernet, huh? where you connect 
And this connection panel, if this has a slot here, then the cables don't have good shielding effectiveness because then the cables are not connected to the housing. Then you have a gap. Then you must put some ceiling inside to connect this rear panel here with the with the connection panel of the interfaces. So these are the interfaces of a computer. I think you know this, this area. And same here. We said uh, radiation depends on the distance of the source. If you have here a cable and here the PCB, and the PCB makes high frequency radiation, you know, as, as differential mode, you remember the two ICs, one integrated circuit, another integrated circuit, they talk, have a differential mode noise, and the differential mo mode noise, the magnetic field is coupled into this cable, this cable brings this electri electromagnetic energy here at the surface, and then it is radiated from here. So <clears throat> you can put a cable ferrite here, yeah, cable ferrite, or put this uh, switch more inside and use here something like a plastic and keep the switch and the, the diodes here inside the housing. This is very poor design here. Yeah. <clears throat> Another thing I want to mention, if you go into the EMC lab and have already some problems and cannot redesign, uh, you can use something which is a so-called noise suppre suppression sheet. Noise suppression sheet. This you can buy from many different companies and this has a uh, ferrite and plastic. This is mixed. Mixed bit, um, a mix bit powder, ferrite powder, and uh, some plastic, and then you get sheets like this, or this is like like a tape, huh? and this can reduce EMC problems. How to use? Yeah, it depends on the permeability. There are different uh, materials in the in the available. And depending on which one you use, they have, you see, different behavior of the permeability over the frequency. This is the react reactance, meaning the, the inductive part of the permeability, and this is the resistive part of the permeability. This I will also explain maybe next time that the permeability of a ferrite has an uh, a real part and an imaginary part. So the res resistive part of the permeability is, an, is the imaginary, the complex part, and uh, the reactive part, the inductive part of the permeability is the real contribution. And this is what we not need. Uh, this, is, this, is, uh, this doesn't turn the electromagnetic energy into heat. We need this one, the my dash dash, the resistive part, and these are the losses. And if we use this ferrite sheet and put it somewhere, for example, on a microcontroller, and the microcontroller works at 100 megahertz, then we have some losses here. It's not very high. You see 25, 30 is not very high. Yeah, Steel, for example, has 10,000. So yeah, the losses are not very high. You cannot expect 50 dB attenuation. But sometimes uh, 10 dB is already very much, and you can pass the EMC tests. Yeah. How to use it? Well, yeah, okay. Uh, if you see you have a housing and uh, you have, for example, at the high frequency range, high frequency range here in the gigahertz range, you have you have reflections inside the housing, and this radiates. You can use this on the cover, so you just stick it on the top cover, inside, and then it can radiate. It can um, reduce the radiation of the circuit here. This is one possibility because it has on one side is a sticky and it has a glue and at the other side it is normal. So you can stick it here on the top cover and it reduces the noise inside the housing. Yeah. <clears throat> Another possibility <clears throat> sorry if you have a if you have a product and this has many PCBs and for example you have here Let's say this is a 
operational amplifier, uh, analog digital converter or something which is very sensitive. And you have here an inductor. And this inductor is maybe the, the, uh, the inductor of a buck converter. Yeah? And this buck converter makes noise and, and makes here problems in the analog digital converter. And you can put it here between. Yeah? You can put here the, the, the gasket inside and then the coupling, the, the emission coupling to this controller here will be much lower. Yeah? So this works quite well, but you must fix it somehow yeah? because this is just like a plastic. Yeah? You must put some screws or some metal that you can fix it. Okay, hi. Can I do some, some light? <coughs> sure, welcome. โอเคอ่าครับก็ดรไฮได้พูดถึงเรื่องของการชิลนะครับว่าไอ้การที่ทําไมต้องมีแมชชีนแมชชีนิคอลเอนจิเนียร์นะครับที่จะต้องมาด
ลบผลของการเกิดการแผ่ขึ้นลบผลออกมานะครับรวมทั้งตำแหน่งการวางนะครับว่าการวางตำแหน่งที่จะทำให้เกิดการเหนี่ยวนำในกรณีที่มีพวก PCB นะครับเป็นเลเยอร์หนึ่งเลเยอร์สองมันก็จะมีทิศทางของการวางตำแหน่งของตัวทำให้เกิดสนามแม่เหล็กนะครับอาจจะทำให้เกิดการลบกวนระหว่าง PCB ได้โอเคไฮ thank you โอเคเฮ้ย There's one more issue <coughs> we have to talk about. Taiwanese corrosion. Yeah, Thailand has a lot of sea around, and there is a lot of water around, and the water is salty. And uh, in this moment, when you uh, use different metals and put them together, you will have something which is called corrosion. Corrosion means uh, deterioration between two metals, yeah. And this means something like oxidization on the surface and no contact. So the product look like this. I think everybody knows it. And this always happen depending on on which materials you use and how much moisture, called here electrolyte. Is between these two metals. So uh, corrosion is you know, decay or deterioration of material due to yeah, reaction, interaction with its environment. And all metals, all are, let's say, sensitive or susceptible to this corrosion. And this always happens when metals with different, I say, let's say, quality, mm, yeah, different potential, like we will see, but are brought into electrical contact. Yeah. So, if there are two electrochemically different metals, we will see on next page what I'm talking about. And if you have some moisture. Electric conduct and and conductive connection, so they must touch each other. Then you will have this problem, this issue. And this happens if you 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 see this, uh, let's say chart chart for the galvanic corrosion and the electrochemical, let's say order. Yeah, and the more they are apart here from each other. The more they have uh, electro electric potential difference, and the more they will get broken. So you see, zinc, zinc, carbon, carbon graphite is carbon. Gives with together with some electrolyte. What is what you can buy in the shop? Naming. Your zinc carbon battery. You know all the, the the let's say more cheap batteries, the zinc carbon batteries. They have just the zinc inside, the zinc uh, housing, and the graphite in the middle. Some electrolyte between. And then you have a battery. The same happens if you, for example, use a steel and the nickel. Then we don't have the 1.4 volt. If you look at the steel, steel minus 0.6 volt, and you look at the nickel with zero, then you will have a battery with about minus 0.6, so 0.6 volt, and this will give corrosion. This will get broken like any battery, like any other. Uh, let's say construction where you have a large distance between this area and this area, two different metals contacting to each other. If they are close to the sea, close to some salty water, for example, then they corrode very quickly. Yeah. This is uh, the greater the potential difference between here and here. 
the greater the galvanic corrosion. Yeah? This is what happens here. So uh, if you want to have a good like, construction, mechanical construction, you must look that you have metals which are close to each other, not far away. Like <coughs> this steel here, or copper nickel, they have almost no difference. They are in the same area. But also here, if you use this metals, or if you use this metals, but not one from this area and one from this area, then you have uh, a battery and the uh, metal will get broken. So if you use gold, it looks very beautiful. If you use gold and you use aluminum, you will have a battery get broken. Yeah, the gold will stay, but the aluminum will deteriorate. The aluminum will be broken. Get the white powder outside, no? the alumi aluminum oxide. Mm -hmm. So this is what needs to be considered. And you see here, for example, stainless steel, aluminum. Stainless steel, aluminum, you have 0.7 volts. This is the so-called anodic index. Aluminum and stainless steel rivet. No? If this is something which puts the two metals together, for example, no? then, then you have here this 0.7 volt and will get broken very soon. No? This has to be considered when you make a mechanical design. So for the practice, you see here the you can calculate here the voltage difference in volt and for the practice we say how much must the number be so for if you have harsh environments meaning you use the product you have a product yeah you want to make some controller and put it in a box yeah and the box is outside outside in the environment and, and then you should have an anodic index not more than 0.15 volt yeah? for example copper nickel yeah with stainless steel this gives you 0.1 volt this is okay if you are put your product somewhere in a warehouse yeah, or in a, in a shop yeah where you have no real controlled air condition or something where you not know, sometimes it's very hot, sometimes very cold, sometimes the door is open the whole day, then you should have an anodic index not more than 0.25. And for controlled environments, like in office, for example, where you always have the same temperature, you can have 0.6. Yeah. So it depends where to use, not just put some metal shields together and say, okay, uh, the housing is done, clong set layer, no, not need to care anymore. No, no, it depends where you want to use it. Yeah, if you use this one here and go in this area, yeah, after five years, it's broken. Mm -hmm. And this is what we have to consider. Yeah, finished with this issue. Some questions to uh, Jalvanic Corrosion. Okay, hi. Thank you. อ่าครับก็ในส่วนที่เรียกว่าการเกิดเป็นสนิมหรือเรียกว่าเกาะเกาะวานิกคอโรชั่นนี้ประเสริฐก็คือว่าตัววัสดุนะครับซึ่ง
อิเล็กโตรดอยู่สองตัวนะครับแล้วก็มีส่วนที่ทําให้เกิดเป็นอิเล็กโตรไลท์มันก็เลยทําให้เกิดเป็นสนิมได้ดังนั้นในกรณีที่ใช้วัสดุมัตเทเรียลต่างชนิดกันสิ่งที่ยอมรับได้ก็คือค่าออกซิเดชันนัมเบอร์เนี่ยไม่ควรจะเกิน 0.15 โวลต์นะครับเช่นเขาบอกว่าถ้าใช้กรณีใช้เป็นคัพเปอร์นิกเกิลนะครับคัพเปอร์กับตัวคัพเปอร์นิกเกิลนั้นกับสแตนเลสสตีลเนี่ยมันมีความต่างของแรงดันอยู่ที่ตัวหนึ่งศูนย์จุดลบศูนย์จุดหนึ่งห้าโวลต์นะครับอีกตัวหนึ่งลบศูนย์จุดหนึ่งห้าโวลต์เพราะฉะนั้นทำให้ความต่างมันอยู่แค่ศูนย์จุดหนึ่งโวลต์ศูนย์จุดหนึ่งโวลต์เนี่ยความต่างกันของค่าออกซิเดชันนัมเบอร์เนี่ยมันน้อยกว่าศูนย์จุดหนึ่งห้าอันนี้รับได้นะครับตัวตัวที่ตัวตัวบอกก็เรียกว่าอะโนดิกอินเด็กซ์ดัชนีบอกถึงความต่างศักย์นะครับเพราะฉะนั้นวัสดุถ้าเป็นระยะยาวนะครับยิ่งกรณีที่มีการใช้งานยาวนานก็เรียกว่า edging effect เนี่ยมันก็จะทำให้เกิด corrosion ขึ้นมาพอเกิด corrosion bad contact ก็เกิดขึ้นและจะทำให้เกิดการชิวนั้นไม่เกิดประสิทธิภาพนะครับดังนั้นก็คือเขาก็พยายามครับว่าในการที่จะเชือกเลือกใช้วัสดุไม่แค่นี้ก็อินเจเนียร์จะต้องเป็นคนดีไซน์สุดท้ายก็ต้องระบุว่าจะต้องใช้ตัวชีตเมทัลเป็นอะไรการยึดด้วยตัวโบตัวนัดตัวสกรูก็ต้องใช้วัสดุที่มันไม่ไม่ไม่แตกต่างชนิดกันไม่ไม่ไม่แตกต่างค่าอาโนดิกอินเด็กซ์นะครับอันนี้คือรวมทั้งกรณีบ้านเราอยู่ใกล้ทะเลหรือมีความชื้นสูงไอ้พวกนี้จะทยิ่งเร่งกระบวนการทําให้เกิดคอร์รัชันได้มากขึ้นนะครับผมคิดว่าตอนนี้ก็เป็นบทสรุปส่วนสําคัญนะครับที่จะทําให้การชิวของเรานั้นโดยพวกยิ่งมีผลการใช้งานที่ยาวนานหรือว่าไม่ไม่เกิดการลีเกตการรั่วของขึ้นได้ง่ายนักนะครับก็ต้องเข้าใจเรื่องของการใช้วัสดุ Yes hi uh, we finish the uh, The corrosion. corrosion. Uh, yep. Good. Okay. Now we have the next issue: grounding. Uh, yeah. Uh, if you have this issue here and corrosion, uh, what you have then is a very poor connection between the between the one part of the housing with another part of the housing, and your ESD protection. Or filtering of the interfaces will, will not work anymore because uh, there is no shielding effectiveness anymore of the housing. So this has everything to do something with EMC and functionality. Yeah, and why do what? What about this grounding? I don't know if you already thought about what is grounding because if you look in the literature, if you look in the books, if you look in the presentations. If you talk with some people, what is grounding? Is it uh, the, the 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 PE of the in of the power socket, or is it zero volt somewhere, or is it a ground plane, or is it uh, the shielding of uh, like the, the 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 paint of 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 a plastic housing, or is it a cable shield? Yeah. So uh, it's not very clear what is grounding. Many people uh, talk about different things, and uh, then they also have many times the question: Can we connect the signal ground to the housing? So USB or uh, audio or video? Can we put this to the housing or not? Uh, should we connect the cable shield to the housing? I think this you should. Be able to answer already. That we talked two hours before, yeah. And uh, what if we connect? Do we have a ground loop something, yeah? or should we have different grounds? Yeah. Uh, in general, there are different understandings of of grounding. Yeah, you have the EMC world where the people say this is low impedance path for the return current. Yeah. Actually, uh, there is no return current, uh, but um, 
the people talk like this. For ESD, they say, okay, it must be uh, the ground reference where the electrostatic discharge go to capacitively. And the safety people, they tell you, yeah, this is uh, the green uh, yellow wire in, in Europe where you can connect your housing to. This all, they talk about grounding. Uh, <clears throat> what is it? Ground is, if you look at the schematic here, we have, um, for example, some, some wire. The wire have an inductance, the wire have a resistance going into the load. And this one, the ground going back, this has some resistance and inductance too. So this is actually the reference, the return pass, which is the grounding. Yeah? And uh, voltage drop here in terms of AC current, here in terms of AC and DC current, this will have an impact on different potentials. Yeah? Here will be another voltage than here. And this is when we talk about grounding. So grounding has something to do with mostly either mechanical design of the housing where we just talked about. Just uh, if you have many holes in your housing, you will have a potential difference between one and another. And, and for sure, PCB layout. PCB layout is the issue next time. We will talk very detailed about PCB layout, uh, how to avoid here ground potential differences. And mechanical design, yeah, this is a matter of uh, conductivity of the metal, metal design, of the metal surface, and on the connection between the PCB and the metal housing. So this is, and if you look in the in very clever books, they tell you, yeah, there are grounding concepts. Uh, the concept like this, you have one PCB, another PCB, another PCB, or Maybe this is controller, this is the, this is the uh, inverter or something. And then you can connect them. This is the ground. No? This is the ground. You can connect the one to the other, to the other. And the currents on the ground, yeah, they will zoom up. And here you will have the highest voltage drop and here the lowest voltage drop. So this thing works only up to some kilohertz. If you have higher frequencies, this grounding concept will not work anymore. Here, you can connect all together to the, to the reference point, the housing. Yeah? One, another one, another one. But this has a longer wire than this one. Or oh, there are all long wires. It is better, this one is already better than this one, but this is still with, yeah, not a very good concept. This you see many times in, uh, in the big boxes where you have the inverters, where you have the controllers inside, and when they when they put for the, when they use for example for the uh, for the for the uh, how is it called um, uh, sun panels and making the electricity, yeah, so there you see concepts like this. But actually, as soon as people talk about ground concepts. They don't understand about EMC because normally there is no ground concept. Yeah, if you must think about connect like this, if you must think about like this, you have already lost. This is not a good EMC or not a good high frequency or not a good electronic design. Yeah, this is I, I have called it here. A ground concept is a constructive attempt to reduce parasitic impedances to a reasonable level. Yeah. I can tell it a very bad word. Please excuse me this expression, but then you know what I mean. A ground concept is a shitty concept and people don't know about EMC. Normally, if you look into the, let's say professional high frequency design and uh, signal integrity and EMC and high frequency design is the same. You have one reference, one metal plate, very thick, good conductive surp surface, and you just connect each and every of this, the filter, the converter, the inverter, 
the microcontroller like here. This is what I have done before uh, in my in my let's say uh, career. Twenty years ago, I was uh, R and D engineer in the satellite communication at Siemens. This thing works at thirty gigahertz, and if you make a design like I have shown before, this one in the high frequency design, it will not never never work. So have one reference with as low as possible drops of current like this one, then it works. Meaning a housing, a metal plate with a good conductive surface, yeah, nickel zinc or something like nickel, zinc surface, for example, zinc surface, then not, not oxidizing yeah, like we talked before and put ever, everything to the ground here, then the whole thing works. Yeah. You must consider the skin effect, like men mentioned here. This is why we have here gold plating. This is for microwave yeah? uh, skin effect. So if the surface uh, conductivity is very low, then uh, you have losses. Yeah? But uh, you can use copper, nickel, for example, on the surface. This works very good. And connect everything, then you have a perfect ground. Yeah. And then you don't have any ground loops. And then you don't have any ESD problem. And then you don't have any problem with the filter at the interfaces. This is always working. All other connections make long wires around in some, some boxes. Forget it. This is chaos, but not a not a good, uh, not a good design. And I don't talk about EMC. I talk about signal integrity. I talk about quality of the product, about good video performance, about no noise in audio, no hum or noise like 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 like, like high frequency noise or like low data speed. All this this happens because of poor EMC, this uh, poor uh, grounding design. So this is concept what always works. I think this we should summarize. Uh, or, <clears throat> yeah, I think we should summarize and then I go to the next slide. Dr. Hai just said about the concept that we will talk about in the problem of the grounding system. ในคอนเซปต์ที่เราต่อกันอย่างกรณีที่เป็นซีรีส์กาวคอนเซปต์พวกนี้เนี่ยมันเป็นตัวที่แย่มากๆเพราะว่าแต่และเซอร์กิตนะครับเซอร์กิตที่หนึ่งสองสามต่างๆเนี่ยน้อยสามารถเชื่อมโยงกับหากันได้และที่สําคัญคือคนละเรเฟรนซ์นะครับระดับแรงดันต่างๆของแต่แต่ละวงจรก็จะแตกต่างกันแม้กระทั่งเราบอกว่าเปลี่ยนไปเป็นพาราเลลกาวดิ้งคอนเซปต์การที่เป็นพาราเลลกาวดิ้งคอนเซปต์นั้นในกรณีของความผี่สูงนั้นสายทุกเส้นที่มีความยาวมันจะมีค่าสเตย์อินดักแตนส์อยู่นะครับเพราะฉะนั้นทําให้มันลิฟต์แรงดันขึ้นมายกระดับแรงดันแตกต่างกันเพราะฉะนั้นาการที่บอกว่าเป็นไอ้กาวเรเฟรนซ์เท่ากันนั้นก็ไม่เป็นจริงสําหรับกรณีความผี่สูงๆนะครับเขาก็เลยยกตัวอย่างถึงตัวที่เป็นตัวอุปกรณ์ที่อยู่ในพวกไมโครเวฟนะครับซึ่งในไมโครเวฟนั้นก็จะมีลักษณะของเป็นกาวเพลนแล้วก็เป็นกล่องนะครับพอกับพอที่เป็นลักษณะเป็นกล่องแบบนี้เนี่ยมันเลยจะทําให้ตัวค่าเลเฟลนเนี่ยมันเสถียรเพราะว่ามันมันเป็นเลเวลที่เป็นศูนย์ใกล้ใกล้ศูนย์จริงๆนะครับการทำให้เกิดค่าสเตย์อินดักแตนส์ต่างๆเนี่ยก,ก็จะน้อยก็จะสั้นเพราะฉะนั้นวงจร1 2 3 4เนี่ยก็จะเป็นวงจรที่ใช้เรเฟรนซ์เดียวกันนะครับแล้วก็ไม่ไม,ไม่ทำให้เกิดเรื่องของกาวหลูเพราะว่ามันมีความต่างสัตว์อยู่ในระดับเดียวกันทั้งหมด Thank you Hi I I explain about uh, how important uh, and the difference between the Uh, so far, a uh, city parallel, and then the the best in uh, sample for 
uh, the microwave or the RF amplify uh, something. Thank you. Okay. Then we go to the next one. Why is it important? Why is it important uh, to have a good ground? If you, but we will see next time, uh, if you consider, for example, an interface filter, the filter needs a ground. And what is the ground of a filter? The ground of a filter is the housing. The ground of the filter is the PCB. And if you have more filters and you have a potential difference between the one ground and the other ground, or if this is too noisy, the filter doesn't work anymore. Yeah. If you talk about a filter, you have one input and you have one output yeah. going here inside and going outside. And uh, this A must be this B. This must have this must have the same ground potential. If you have different groundings, uh, that doesn't work anymore. Then you have potential difference, meaning here is another voltage than here yeah, because of the inductance between. So... Uh, the, a, a filter, like you will see next time, a filter is a frequency depending voltage divider, meaning here, here some energy, energy goes inside. And if at least one of these impedances here is fre frequency selective, like here an inductor and here a capacitor, then you have a low pass filter. But this means this is a voltage divider. And a voltage divider means this air, this point here must be the same like your noise source. And if there is a difference here, because here is some resistor or some inductor inside, because of this uh, grounding concepts, it doesn't work anymore. So uh, it is not a matter of, let's say, uh, a nice EMC. No, this is a matter of functionality, of design working or design not working, quality of the product. This is here the issue. Yeah. Same like here. Uh, this is another, an another let's say, um, visualization, another picture. We have here some uh, source, like like an like a line uh, a clock clock generator here, and there we have some driver, some some line uh, buffer integrated circuit. And if we have a potential difference between the one and the other one, because this is a PCB, let's say, and we cut here, yeah, then we have a loop. We have a ground loop here, yeah? a potential difference between the one IC and the other IC. And then you will have a higher emission. But higher emission means also more sensitive, more susceptible for immunity, for disturbances from the outside. Yeah? The higher the emission of a product or of a, a PCB area, the higher also the sensitivity for disturbances from the outside. So this ground must be one layer here, no cut inside. This is very important, but we will see next time in our next present, next workshop, uh, next month or after next month, we will see uh, how this is how this is working in the in the layout. We will show you concrete schematics. So if we connect, if we have this gap here, and we connect it by to for, by a wire here. Uh, go to the ground here. Then we close this loop here. This, we close the return path. And then we have a low emission again. Yeah. So this is exactly this grounding system I showed you before. As I told you, this is not a good idea because you go with one ground, uh, with one wire, circuit one, circuit one. You go with a wire to the, to, to the ground. Here, this is here. This one is here. Yeah. And then you have another IC, you see? Yes, son. Also go together, go here. Then you have a loop area. And this we calculated. I showed you in the beginning when I talked about the summary of part one, or if you visited last time, then you maybe still remember on this differential mode formula for the emission. And then you have a radiation. So the signal current here needs a small loop and a good conducting low impedance ground. And as I mentioned in the beginning, very beginning, I said, 
it doesn't matter if this an, if this is an integrated circuit. This is an integrated circuit, a controller, controller, like here. I see one, I see two, I see one, I see two. Or if this is PCB one, PCB two, that doesn't matter. The level of integration, like I called it, is not important. The system, the principle is important. And if this one is in one IC, it gets the same problem. Yeah. As soon as there is a ground loop, you lose. And this is the message here. Why we need a good ground. Yeah. Same here. <clears throat> if you have a reference ground like here, if you have different, here it's on the PCB on one controller. Yeah. If you have different uh, ground because of some impedance between here one to the other one, or here, yeah, here it radiates, then you will have the same problem, the emission problem, or no stable stable behavior. Up, if there are some some disturbances in the in the power line or something, then it starts resetting and all these things. So this must be considered. All the ground reference must be the same. One example: if you need to separate, sometimes we need to separate. This I will go I'll show exactly next time. Uh, because of functionality, <coughs> you have, for example, you have a gate driver and you have a push-pull amplifier, yeah, meaning with high current yeah, for a buck converter, for example, and you need to separate, then you can connect together with, uh, for example, with capacitors or with SMD ferrites. What do I mean? This is a PCB. Here you have an I.O. connector. For example, here plus 24 volt, here ground for as a buck as a power supply. Yeah? And then you need to separate the controller from the push-pull amplifier in the output after before the before the inductor in the in the in the power controller. So and you want to separate. Yeah, then you can connect this in the high frequency range with a capacitor or in beginning with a zero ohm resistor and then connect together and see if it is still, uh, let's say, uh, EMC compliant or not. And then you can uh, choose different values of, of, of capacitors, different values of SMD ferrite if you want to separate in the high frequency range. And this here, this here, these are the connections to the housing, mounting hole. This is housing, this is housing, and then you can have split planes. Who works with layout, uh, with Altium Designer or Mentor Graphics or something, understand this is a so-called split plane where you can separate uh, the electronic PCBs, grounds, or VCCs in different, in different let's say, islands. Yeah? I show you more uh, uh, about this uh, that you understand. I have an example very soon. So same like here, if you have uh, different ground potentials, yeah. here this is the R ground, because all the grounds, they have an uh, endless uh, resistance and inductance, they are not zero. Huh? And uh, if you have a ground loop, you can, this, you can um, interrupt it at a high frequency range with an SMD ferrite, or you can uh, connect it at the high frequency range with a capacitor. You know, if you make some uh, amplifier design and then you have still noise in the speaker, then you have ground loops on the PCB and this, this you can avoid when you split the planes uh, like the power amplifier, the power supply and the pre-amplifier and connect them controlled with some components. How does it look like? Let's skip this first. For example, I show you an example. You have here a buck boost converter, you have a DC input filter, and you have here a controller. Yeah? You go to some interfaces, and you need to separate this because, you know, here, this is for heavy industry in a, some factory. There's a high noise here, and you don't want to have problems with the, with the, with the MCU, with the controller here. So you need to separate uh, this because of ground noises. Yeah, okay, then you can say, okay, this is my input filter. This is my uh, buck converter supplying this uh, controller board here. And this is the, let's say, uh, from, from Altium Designer, here the, the assembly plan here. 
And what we do here, we split. Huh? We split the filter because we know if the filter gets a very high energy, like from transients or, or search, the, the ground may have some offset here. But what we do is underneath, below this PCB, underneath, there's a metal shield, a metal, where we all connect this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this, this. This we all connect the ground to the metal shield, but we separate the ground layers from each other. So the PCB ground is interrupted by this green line here. But the grounding of each of the products goes down to the metal plate. This is exactly what I have shown you before. When we go back, it's this system, right? This one, this one. We have, ah, Back, yeah. Input filter to the metal housing. Buck converter to the metal housing. CPU to the metal housing. And this is the metal housing here. Yeah. So it's exactly this concept here. When you look what we have here. Hmm. This is what we make here. And so if we go look to the layer, we have the filter power ground. We have the power ground of the buck, con buck boost converter, and we have the ground of the uh, controller electronic, and we have an additional interface ground here. But they are all connected together to a metal sheet underneath. This is how this works. So uh, if we go to the VCC layer, <clears throat> they should not parallel each other. So meaning this one here, you see this one, this sick one, must be always the same. Also in the in the ground layer, and also in the VCC layer. If this is not same separated, they will overlap, and they will due to the capacitances, the parasitic capacitances between the layers, they will induce, not induce, but couple, capacitively couple noise from the one to the other plane and this we want to avoid huh? so they must be in parallel yeah underneath here the, this is the filter ground because we don't have vcc in the filter that's a passive filter but at the back on uh, the controller which works with five volt underneath or uh, below this plane here you have exactly the ground plane yeah? so they must not overlap to the to the different functionalities here. And all together must be connected in a reference to the metal housing, the metal sheet underneath. Then it works. Yeah, okay. Here from the side view again, here with another example. Here that's an USB 3 interface, for example. There we have the USB 3 connect connector or receptacle here. Then we have here the shield ground where we connected. This is the board lock to the metal housing here. And here we have the ground of the electronic. But yeah, so you see here the ground here, this one. And you see here the shield ground, but they are all connected to the metal chassis. So this one are all the connection to the metal chassis and the functional grounds on the PCB are here in this case separated. Why? Yeah, because here, this is the cable which can couple energy, electromagnetic energy outside, and can also receive transients, ESD or something. And what we do here is the wire which is inside the cable. There's a ground wire. You know from USB 2, you know there is a red and a black wire inside. The red wire is the plus five volt, the ground, the black wire in the USB 2 cable is the ground, but the ground in the VCC, they are also cable, they are wires. So they can emit radiated emission. They also can receive, couple in some disturbances. This is why we filter the ground in the wire and go via an inductor here to the PCB ground and with a capacitor to the shield ground, which is the housing directly here. So we filter that ground and VCC via 
against the cable shield, against the housing. So this is essential for a good functionality of a USB design. You not just put everything together and cable connect, finish. No, that doesn't work. That's not very professional. This is why we have here. We will have examples next time with concrete schematics and layouts. This is just an introduction here because of the grounding concepts to show you. Yeah, clear so far? Thank you very much, Hank. Very, very, very interesting, particular on the uh, 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 last, uh, last four or five uh, slides. I think it's really important. โอเคนะครับเดี๋ยวผมจะขออนุญาตอ่าสรุปประเด็นนะครับว่าทําไมกราวดิ้งที่มีความสําคัญมากๆนะครับในโดยเฉพาะอย่างนะครับที่ท่านได้ติดต่อคอนเฟิร์มนะครับแล้วก็สไลด์นี้ก็เป็นเป็นปกติก็อ่าก็จะไม่ได้ไม่ได้มอบให้นะครับแต่วันนี้
สุดท้ายก็คือในช่วงที่ดรไฮได,ได้ได้กล่าวถึงนะครับว่าเอ๊การเชื่อมโยงต่างๆเนี่ยโดยเฉพาะอย่างยิ่งในกรณีที่เป็นแผ่นตัวอย่างของคอนโทรลเลอร์แล้วก็เซนเซอร์ต่างๆนะครับเหตุผลก็คือต้องการทำเป็นอินดิวิดอลกราวดิ้งนะครับโดยมีโครงสร้างที่ทำให้คอนโทรลเลอร์วงจรต่างๆไม่รบกวนซึ่งกันและกันนะครับเพราะว่ามันมีเลเวลพาวเวอร์ต่างกันนะครับอย่างเช่นบัคคอนเวอร์เตอร์นะครับแล้วก็ตัวที่เป็นคอนโทรลอิเล็กทรอนิกส์เนี่ยคนละเลเวลคนละพาวเวอร์เลยต้องใช้เป็นลักษณะของอินดิวิดอลนะครับอันนี้ก็เป็นตัวอย่างที่ที่ดีมากๆแล้วก็หวังว่าคอนเซปต์พวกนี้นะครับจะเป็นพื้นฐานซึ่งจะอธิบายในครั้งต่อไปนะครับว่าในครั้งต่อไปก็จะลงในรายละเอียดต่างๆตัวนี้เป็นเป็นสิ่งหนึ่งที่ทางบริษัทคอมเบลได้นำเสนอเป็นซีรีส์ของ EMC ซึ่งมีมีทั้งหมดประมาณห้าห้าครั้งนะครับครั้งนี้เป็นครั้งที่สามเพราะฉะนั้นยังเหลืออีกสองครั้งซึ่งในรายละเอียดต่างๆเนี่ยก็คงจะได้มีโอกาสมานำเสนออีกต่อไปนะครับไม่ทราบว่ามีท่านใดมีคำถามหรือข้อ,อประเด็นต่างๆนะครับขอให้พิมพ์เข้ามาเลยครับเดี๋ยวผมจะช่วยสื่อสารกับดรไฮในห่วงเวลาที่เรายัางยังบรรยายอยู่นะครับพิมพ์พิมพ์พิมพ์เข้ามาทางทางไลน์เลยครับทางทางทางชัดซูมก็ได้ครับทางชัดซูมโทษทีครับพิมพ์มาทางชัดซูมครับ I'm hi I'm waiting for some response or some question or comment from the participant okay. ดรไฮเป็นบิษณุกรที่ปรึกษาใหญ่นะครับของคอมเบลเป็นเป็นสตาฟของคอมเบลนะครับที่ประจำอยู่ทั้งที่ทั้งที่เมืองไทยนี่แหละครับช่วงนี้ไปกลับไปเยี่ยมบ้านนะครับไปปฏิบัติธุรกิจที่ที่เยอรมันครับตรงเวลาเสร็จแล้วนัดนัดเย็ดนัดเย็ดเย็ดเองเย็ด no I mean I mean with my I mean with my presentation this I mean <laughs> yes your presentation is finished uh, thank you very much A very very nice uh, presentation And uh, also the document, I kept uh, the the document uh, of your presentation to our participant. Okay, club. If there is no, I must thank you all for coming to the meeting and for sharing your knowledge. I want to thank you all. อ่าดรไฮแล้วก็ผู้ครบรมประชุมอ่าอีกครั้งหนึ่งนะครับแล้วก็หวังว่าในครั้งหน้านะครับครั้งหน้านี้จะเป็นการอ่านำเสนอในซีรีส์ต่อไปนะครับก็คืออ่าในดีเทลในดีเทลของอ่างานนี้ก็คือตัวทีนะครับขออนุญาตดูอ่าก็คือเราจะพูดเสนอในเรื่องของพวกอ่าฟิลเตอร์ดีไซน์นะครับรวมทั้งพวกที่เป็นพวก PCB อ่าแล้วก็รวมอาจจะขยับไปถึงขั้นตอนที่เรียกว่าเป็นครั้งที่เป็นตัวคอมโพเนนต์เลเวลด้วยนะครับอันนี้ก็เป็นส่วนที่จะนำเสนอครั้งต่อไปน่าจะเป็นประมาณเดือนอ่าเดือนพฤศจิกายนนะครับเดือนพฤศจิกายนก็ขออนุญาตปิดการอาจบการนำเสนอในหัวข้อ EMC ของการสัมมนาวันนี้นะครับขอให้ทุกท่านโชคดีนะครับปลอดภัยจากโควิดปลอดภัยจากน้ำท่วมเลยครับสวัสดีครับขอบคุณมากครับ Thank you very much Hi Thank you Can you say hello to the uh, our participant please Yeah Yeah, uh, yeah. So thank you also very much for the uh, participation. And uh, as you will get the uh, PDF file, uh, you can check it at home again or in, in your work again. Go through it, and in case you have questions, then please contact us, and then we can answer your questions. Then, so uh, even if you have questions in one, two, three weeks or next month, no problem. Just contact us.
โอเค thank you ครับขอบพระคุณทุกท่านครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับครับสวัสดี